123. Ta-da! So what we had to use was we had to use a dictionary, either a printed book or an online version. So I'm guessing quite a few of us used an online version and that may have caused some issues when doing this part of your homework, word with endings. So um, as I recall, uh, printed dictionaries, they should always have um, options of words with different endings on them. However, when I looked at the online dictionaries, they were different and they didn't show um, the words or as many words with different endings. So if that was the case, I really hope that some of you took the initiative and figured out and tried to think yourself about what other uh, types of words you could make with different endings. So let's just have a look at that. So for the first one, we had the word jewel. Now, when you learned about the word jewel or when you looked it up, what different parts of speech did you get? Did you, Katie, what do you think? It's just one part of <clears throat> speech and it is a noun. Good girl, well done, Katie. Jewel is just one part of speech. It can only be a noun. Now, the word with endings we can make with jewel, we only have one option because it's a noun. We can make the word jewels because it's a noun. We can add the letter S to make the word jewels. Number two, the word is rickety. Now, what part of speech or parts of speech did we get for this one? Um, Helene. It is adjective. Good girl. We've got one part of speech and it's an adjective. Now, can anyone tell me what uh, other words we can make with different endings? Now, bear in mind, it's an adjective. So think about how we can use this word to compare. Think about comparative adjectives. When we're talking about two or more than two nouns, I could say, this bridge is rickety. That bridge is ricketier, but that bridge is the ricketiest. So we can use these as comparative adjectives. Number three, the word blast. What different or what part of speech did you get for this one, Ryan? It's a verb. Okay, it's a verb. Did we get any other parts of speech for this one? Katie, what do you think? It's a verb and a noun. Good girl, Katie. Well done. The word blast is a noun and a verb. So you can say, wow, I heard a blast, which is a noun. Or you can say the rocket blasted into space, which would be a verb. Okay, what words with different endings did we make for blast? Okay, Simon, what do you think? Blasted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blasted. Any other words? Dami, go ahead. Make sure you click the raise your hand button so I can see you. Okay, guys, so for the word blast as a noun and a verb, we can make these words. Blasts, as in the plural noun, or blasts, as in a singular subject with a singular verb. Blasted and blasting. Okay, number four, Ming Ang. Adjective. Good girl. Adjective is one, and we have another, which is a noun. We can also have it as a noun, or we can also have it as an adverb. So the word sharp can be an adjective, an adverb, and a noun. And the different endings we have of sharp are, Cherry, what do you think? Mm, sharp and sharpen. Good. Ah, so we can have sharps, sharper, and sharpest. Good girl, Cherry, well done. So sharpen is a different word altogether. So we can't write down sharpen, but we can have sharps, sharper, and sharpest. Okay, last one, blur. We have the word blur. What do we think about the word blur? What parts of speech did we get? Zwiming. Adjective. So not quite, so blurry would be an adjective, but blur is a noun and a verb. So you can say, there is a blur on my glasses, which is a noun. Or you can say, uh, the tears in my eyes blur my vision. And that's it used as a verb. 
Can anyone tell me the different word with endings we, or the different words with endings we can get for the word blur? Okay, Nuna, what do you think? E. E-D, absolutely. Any others? Uh, Nancy, what can you think of? Blurry and blurring. Good job. Well done, Nancy. We can have blurs, blurred, and blurring. Really, really good job, guys. Lovely. Okay. Now what we had to do is write one sentence of your own that could be an example sentence for one meaning of each word. So basically, you had to pick one, two, three, four, five words and make a sentence that explained the meaning. So you could choose it as a noun or a verb. Here are my sentences. Firstly, did you notice the jewels she was wearing around her neck? Secondly, the stairs look too rickety to safely climb. Last, music blasted from the radio. Next, a knife is a sharp object that can cut things. And finally, blur. I couldn't tell who was in the photo because it was blurred. So you should have five sentences with some of your words up here that clearly show the meaning. It's really important that your sentences show the meaning of the word. So for example, you can't say, look at those jewels, because that doesn't really help us understand the meaning of each word. All right, let's move on to our lesson today. So today is grammar, and today we're learning about nouns. We're learning about two different kinds of nouns. Can you please read this page for me, Boo? Abstract and concrete nouns. A concrete noun is a person, place, or thing. An abstract noun is a noun that names an idea, feeling, or a quality. You cannot touch, hear, taste, smell, or see it. Good job. Well done, Boo. Okay, guys, so a concrete noun is a person, place, or thing. They're called concrete nouns because you can feel them, you can touch them, you can taste them, you can smell them, you can see them. It is a noun that you can look at. For example, this bottle is a concrete noun. I can feel it, I can look at it, I can touch it, I can see it, I can uh, smell it, and it smells like metal. I can clearly see it is there in front of me. So concrete nouns are what we've learned about a lot. However, this is the first time we'll be learning about abstract nouns. An abstract noun is a noun that names an idea, a feeling within you, or a quality. With an abstract noun, you cannot touch it. You cannot hear it. You cannot taste it, smell it, or see it. An abstract noun is something that exists, but it can't physically be touched. Have a look at these examples. Can you read them for me, please? Uh, let's go for Daisy. Love, bravery, opinion, strength. Good job. So these words are all nouns. They're all things, but we can't touch them. We can't touch love. We can't touch bravery. We can't touch an opinion and we can't touch strength. Even though we can't touch them or see them or smell them, it doesn't mean that they don't exist though. And that's what an abstract noun is. If you cannot touch, hear, smell, or see it, it's an abstract noun. If you can touch, hear, taste, smell, or see it, it's a concrete noun. Let's have a look at doing some examples. So. Have a look at these. Can you please read these all out for me? Um, Mooney. Love. Bravery. Friendship. Health. Happiness. Angry. Anger. Anger. Excitement. Talent. Childhood. Knowledge. 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 Wealth. Friendship. Good job. Oh, sorry, we said friendship already. Good girl. Well done, Mooney. Lovely work. Okay, guys, so these are all um, examples of abstract nouns. They are abstract because while they are things, like I said, you can't touch them, 
you can't see them, you can't hear them, you can't smell them, you can't taste them. When you think of the word happiness, it's a noun, but there's no way for you to touch happiness. It is not really there. It's a feeling that you have inside of you. Good job, Simon. Well done. You're saying most of these are feelings. Some of these are ideas and some of them are qualities. So, for example, health is a quality that you have. Wealth, like money and having a lot of money, is a quality that you have. It's not a feeling. Okay, let's have a look and do some practicing. Have a look at these sentences. Is the underlined noun concrete or abstract? Number one, read the sentence for me, please, uh, Ryan. The old man enjoyed the beauty of the country. Okay, have a look at the word beauty, guys. It's underlined, so it is a noun. Now, is it concrete or abstract? If you're not sure, ask yourself the questions. Can we see, touch, hear, taste, and smell beauty? What do we think? Is beauty abstract or concrete? If we can touch it and feel it and smell it and taste it and see it, it's concrete. If we cannot, it's abstract. What do you think, Dami? I think it is an abstract noun. Good job, Dami. Beauty, oh, sorry, that shouldn't say that. Beauty is abstract. Good job. So with beauty, we cannot taste it, we cannot smell it, we cannot touch it, we cannot feel it. Good job, Dami. Okay, next, number two. Uh, can you please read that sentence for me? Ha Ling. He had a fre freedom, freedom to wander anywhere. Good girl, Ha Ling. He had the freedom to wander anywhere. So wander is another word for walk or roam or stroll. So he had the freedom to go anywhere or to walk anywhere. The word that is underlined here is freedom. Now, what do we think about the word freedom? Is that an abstract or a concrete noun? Think about freedom. Can you touch it? Can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you taste it? Can you smell it? Think about these questions. Ask yourself these questions and decide whether you think it's concrete or abstract. Ruby, what do you think? I think it is abstract. Good girl. Ruby, why do you think it's abstract? Because we can feel it. We can't feel it. Good girl. Well done. We're not able to feel it. We're not able to see it. We're not able to taste it. Good girl. Number three. Uh, read the sentence for me, please, Fred. He had hope that he would see something interesting. Very good. He had hope that he would see something interesting. The underlined noun here is hope. What do you think about this noun? Uh, let's go for kitty. Abstract noun. Good girl, kitty, well done. The word hope is an abstract noun. With the word hope, it's a feeling inside of you. You feel hopeful that something will happen. It's not something that you can see or touch or smell or taste. Number four, read that sentence for me, please, Katie. He walked toward the tall hill beyond the lake. Very good. Well done. He walked toward the tall hill beyond the lake. Now have a look at the word hill here. It's been underlined. What do you think about the word hill? Is that a concrete noun or an abstract noun? Nancy, what do you think? I think this is a concrete noun. Good girl. How do you know it's a concrete noun, Nancy? Because we can see hills, we can see, we can see hills because it is matter, and secondly, it is visible to sight. That means it's not like air or a feeling or whatever quantity that we have. Very good. Well done, Nancy. We are able to see a hill. We're able to touch it. I mean, we probably wouldn't want to taste it, but if we wanted to taste it, we absolutely could pick up some grass and pick up with some soil and put it in our mouth. It wouldn't be very nice, but you could taste it. <clears throat> Number five, can you read that for me, please, Ryan? Number five, after the hill we saw three paths. 
Good job. After the hill, he saw three paths. Now, what do we think here, guys? The word that's underlined is paths. Are paths concrete nouns or abstract nouns? Okay, Sup, so, what do you think? Good concrete. job. Can you tell me how you know it's a concrete noun? Okay, Simon, can you tell us all what the difference is, please? The abstract that noun, and we cannot feel, we cannot not touch it or eat it or see it. We just only could feel, could feel it in our body. Very good. Well done, and, Simon. And con concrete eat now is is things that that we could see. Good job, Simon. Well done. You think about the five senses. You think about hearing, seeing, touching tasting, feeling, okay? Now, when you think of these five um, senses, I want you to ask yourself the question, this table, can I see it? Can I touch it? Can I taste it? Can I hear it? Ask yourself these questions, and if the majority of them are yes, you've got yourself a concrete now. Then when it comes to something like hope, I want you to think, can I see hope? No. Can I taste hope? No. Can I touch hope? No. And if the answer is mostly no, then you know it's an abstract noun. An abstract noun is a thing that you can think about or that you could feel in your body, whereas a concrete noun is something that you can physically see and touch. All right. Number six, last one. Can you please read that for me? Cherry. Luck was with him when he took the correct path. Good job. Luck. Who can explain to me what luck is? Luck is an abstract noun that means that something good happened to you because people want to believe that it's God's will. <laughs> well but, done, Nancy. But I'm just going to close the abstract noun. Good job. You're right. Luck is an abstract noun. And what luck is, is luck is an idea. Luck is an idea that something good is happening. So sometimes people might say, good luck in your test. I hope that all the uh, questions that you get on the test are questions that you know and that you have studied for and that you are able to answer correctly. We cannot see luck. It's just an idea that we can think about. All right, guys. Have a look at this next uh, page before we move on to doing a game at the end. Have a look. It was a joy to hear the old storytellers tales, feeling. On this page, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for you guys to read the sentence and find the abstract noun. You have a clue in brackets at the end that lets you know what kind of abstract noun they're looking for. So number one, it was a joy to hear the old storytellers' tales. Cherry, what do you think? I think it's joy. Correct, well done. Joy is a feeling that we cannot see, but it's something that we feel inside our bodies when we feel happy. It's an abstract noun. Number two, one story told the truth about a cruel king. I'm looking for an abstract noun that is an idea. Nuna? Truth. Good girl, well done. The truth is not something that we can see or taste or touch, but it is an idea that we can think about. Good job, Nuna. Number three, the people wanted fairness for themselves. Ming Ang, what do you think the abstract noun is here? Fairness. Good girl, well done. Fairness, again, is not something that we can see or touch. It's an idea that we can think about. Number four, all the king wanted was more wealth for himself. Nuna, what do you think? Wealth. Good girl, well done. So wealth is having money. Now we can't always see when people have money. We don't know. It's a quality that someone can have, but we don't necessarily have to see it. Okay, number five. Only one girl had the courage to stand up to the king. Ruby. C courage. Courage, good girl, well done. So courage is the same as bravery. Only one girl had the courage to stand up to the king. Again, bravery or courage is a quality that someone has, but we can't touch it, we can't see it, we can't smell it. Good job. Last one, 
there was happiness in the kingdom when the king left. What do you think the abstract noun is here? Khaki. Happiness. Good job. Happiness is a feeling that we cannot see or touch. It's something that we feel inside of our bodies. Awesome work. Well done, guys. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, bring us to our game. So as always, I'm going to divide you into boys and girls. This is a concrete and abstract noun game. Uh, you will see a sentence with lots of different words and I'll either ask you to tell me the concrete nouns or the abstract noun or nouns. And if you get them right, you'll get a point for your team. Okay, I'm gonna let the girls go first this time. So as you can see, we've got lots of different bunny rabbits. You must describe what the bunny is doing uh, so that you can pick a square. Let's go for Daisy. Daisy, pick a bunny rabbit, please. Choose the rabbit that is um, floating on the water. Oh yeah, that's in the sky. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Daisy, he was given an award for his courage. Tell me what the abstract noun or nouns are here. Courage. Good girl. It is courage. Well done. Lovely work. Okay, you've just won 25 points for your team, Daisy. Good girl. Okay, on to the boys. I would like, okay, Simon, Simon, choose a rabbit for me, please. The rabbit with the carrot. The rabbit with the carrot. The carrot, this cute one down here. Okay. Okay, Simon, she may be little, but she is brave. Give me the concrete noun, sorry, the abstract noun in this sentence. The abstract noun is brave. Let's see. Good job, well done. Have a look. All right, Simon, lovely work. Okay, moving on to the next one, over to the girls. Katie. Uh, two rabbits hugging each other. Okay, the boy jumped in the pool. Katie, can you please find the concrete noun or nouns in this sentence, please. A uh, boy and pool. Let's see. Good girl, well done. Awesome work. You've just won 20 points for your team. Okay, moving on to the boys. Okay, uh, Zwiemin, can you choose a rabbit instead, please? I choose the rabbit that is crying. Okay, swap points. Good job. Okay, so now the boys have 45 points and the girls have 15. Girls, back to you. Uh, I'm going to go with Ming Ang. Um, so I choose the rabbit dancing. Okay, uh, Ming Ang, can you please tell me the concrete noun or nouns in this sentence? Family. Okay, let's have a look. Good girl, well done. Family is the concrete noun. Good job, you want 20 points for your team. Back to the boys. Okay, sup. I'm choosing the rabbit. It's angry. The door slammed shut. Please tell me the concrete noun or nouns in this sentence. Door slammed. So not door slammed, but just door. So door is my concrete noun for that one. Slammed is a verb. Okay, moving on. This will be the last game. Okay, let's go for Jenny. Jenny, can you pick a rabbit for me, please? A uh, rabbit that uh, holding the giant carrot. Okay, good girl. Well done. Have a look, Jenny. She believed in justice. I want you to tell me what the abstract noun is in this sentence. Justice. Good girl. Well done. So that was a bit of a tough one. The word justice is abstract. Justice is when people believe in things being fair and things being right. Good girl, Jenny, well done. So that means the girls win with a total score of 60 yeah. points. And boys, you have 45 points. Good job. All right, guys. Okay, guys, in your reader's notebooks, you have two pages. You have pages 114 and 116. Have a lovely day and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.